How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs where we love to help people get out there and enjoy the RVing experience even more. And sometimes we're giving advice about how to set up an inverter or really technical details about RVing, but today I wanted to give you a beginner's guide to RVing. So maybe you want to rent an RV for the first time to see if it fits for you, or you want to go to a place like Yellowstone where it just matches that style of travel. Well, today I wanted to give you some advice so that you wouldn't be overwhelmed when you go out for the first time. So let's go sit down so we can look at a few of these tips. Okay, to start off, I'm gonna try and keep it simple, but there's gonna be a lot of information that we're gonna try and pack into this video, but we're gonna try and keep it simple so you get more of the overview. If you wanna see more information about some of these topics, you'll see some cards pop up, so that way you can dive more into that topic. But let's give you a good overview of what you would want to know going out on an RV trip for the first time. I don't wanna to dive too deeply into all the different types of RVs that are out there for you to rent, but it's best to be able to pick your style based on a few things that you wanna consider. Number one, how many people are going to be going with you? That's gonna dictate the size of the RV that you need to select. Number two, where are you going to be going? Are you hoping to go off grid? Are you gonna be going to campgrounds? What are those locations that you would like to go to? So an app that I like to use for that or a website that I like to use is Campendium. You can check out all the different kinds of areas and RV parks that are gonna be available to you in that area that you're going to. So you can see what would be available and what kind of rig would I want in those kind of places. And the third thing is what kind of experience are you looking for? As we go through this list, you, you'll kind of be able to narrow some of that down so you can figure out which RV you want to take on your trip. I have to say, when driving through a place like Yellowstone, you see all the, the different types of rental RVs because it's not really that inexpensive to do it, but there's, there's Cruise America, there's El Monte RV, there's the plethora of camper vans that are out there, and then not to mention RV Share and Outdoorsy. There's so many different places and styles of RVs that you can rent. Uh, but there's so much more than just renting the RV. So uh, let's get into some of our list and tips to help you out. Now the next thing on our list is actually giving you a checklist. So I'm gonna put a, a link down in the description so you can look through this list, you can add to it if you want and see what might apply to your trip. But this will look a little bit different than if you were going on a trip to a hotel where in an RV you probably wanna have a, a folding chair, you wanna bring some stuff for the kitchen, a towel, bug repellent, something to be able to cook s'mores on at night. What does your trip look like? And it's going to probably have a different set of gear for your different style. So that, that gear list will spark some thoughts and give you some ideas of things that you should take along so that you don't forget anything so that you can enjoy your trip. Now next, let's go through a few of the things on how to use the, the systems in the RV so that you're not intimidated to use them when you're out there. And that way it's just that much easier if you're not intimidated by it because you already know how it works. So let's look at hooking up the RV to full hookups. So full hookups is when you have water, sewer, and electricity that you can plug into and use for your RV. So let's start by looking at our electrical connections. We want to plug in our RV for power. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna have the, the breaker off where you're gonna be connecting into power. And if they've given you a surge protector, you wanna plug that in first. So plug in the surge protector, and then you can plug your RV into the, the surge protector, and then you can turn on the breaker at the pedestal. At that point, you have power coming into the RV, it's charging the batteries, everything electrically is going to be working inside of the RV. Now let's move on to the other connections. So connecting the water is pretty simple. Sometimes you'll have a pressure regulator. Might look a little bit different than this one, but you wanna put that on the hose bib first where you're connecting to the water source. So you just screw that on and then we connect our hose to that. Then we connect the other side of the hose to the inlet of the RV and then we can turn the water on. Just as a side note, you only need to use the pump when you're using the, the water out of the fresh water tank. If you're using water from a full hookup site where you're, you're connected to the RV park, the pressure coming from the RV park will be sufficient to give you pressure inside the RV. You don't need to turn on the pump for that. So only use the pump when you're using the water from the fresh water tank in the RV. Now to fill up the fresh water tank, we can just remove this cap and fill up the tank here is really the, the most typical way that I've seen. So you, you can fill it up and then put the cap back in place. 
Now it's actually pretty simple for hooking up our drain line for our black tank and our gray tanks, all the, the drain lines that we have in the RV. Uh, so what we have here is we have a fitting that connects onto here, just twist locks on, and then our hose connects to that. Then the other end of this hose has an adapter that usually threads into the sewer connection down there and our flexible hose connects to that. So uh, that's the hose. It's really not that difficult to set up. Then we have the support that we can put underneath the hose so that the hose drains properly. It's, it's sloped that way. Now, if we want to empty the tanks, it's really not that difficult. You want to start with your black tank. It's going to be the largest valve on here. So we open up the black tank now that everything is connected and we allow everything that's in that black tank, that's everything that the toilet drains into. Uh, we open that up and we allow that to, to flush out. Then we close that valve and then we can open up the other valves. Uh, those will be the, the gray tanks and it will flush everything that's in that hose out into the, the drain system. So then after that, our tanks are empty and we can get on to the next piece of advice. Now, if you plan to use the RV off-grid instead of being in a full hookup campground, then there's gonna be a few things you wanna to do to prepare before you get out there. First off, if you wanna have water when you get out there, you wanna fill up that fresh water tank. Fill that up so that when you get out there, you can turn on the pump and be able to have water at the sinks, the faucets, the shower, uh, and have that limited water supply that you can use while you are out there. And along with that, you can also use a little bit of electricity when you're out there. So your, your lights are still gonna work off of the battery bank and the 12 volt system, and you're gonna still be able to put the slides in and out and the awnings out, um, all that off of battery power. But if you're wanting to have AC power and you wanna be out there boondocking or off grid or not connected to, to hookups, you either need to bring a generator or you need to have some kind of a, a, a solution like a, a power station. So all this really depends on you and what level of convenience you would like when you get out there. I mean, if we weren't looking for a convenience, we wouldn't use an RV. We would just go camping in a tent. So there is going to be some level of convenience that you're looking for here. So whether you look for a, a generator or a, a power station, you have options to get out there and use it. The reason I mention power stations is because if you're not getting into an RV and want to set up a, an entire solar setup because you're renting an RV, you might want to have a, a power station so that you can use power when you go out there and that has other uses for other trips down the road or emergency backup at home. But it's just something to consider when you go out there if you're looking for a little bit more power and there's all different kinds of levels. Some are able to run coffee makers and hair dryers and some are just be able to charge up camera batteries and a, a few things like that. So you can look at all different kinds of, of levels and degrees of what kind of convenience you would like when you go RVing. When it comes to actually getting behind the wheel in the RV, there's probably just three simple things that I wanna be able to share with you so that you can get started in this. There's so many things you can say and so much advice that you can give to RVers, but if you keep it simple, those things might stick. If you give too much information, it just gets lost in the amount of information. So number one, I would wanna say, take it slow. You wanna slow down on your RV trip. It's gonna take longer. The larger your vehicle is, it's gonna take you longer to get where you're going. So don't try and have a race against the GPS. Just take it slow and enjoy it. And taking it slow also means giving a little bit more distance than you're usually used to giving when you're driving. These things are going to be bigger than you're used to, so slowing down a little bit, giving a little bit more space is going to make it that much safer and more relaxing as you drive. Number two is pay attention. You wanna pay attention to the size of the RV. For one, you're gonna have a much taller vehicle typically than usual, and you wanna know the height of that RV so you don't try and go under something that's shorter than what your RV is. You also wanna pay attention to when you're gonna be arriving at your next location. It's better to get there when the sun is still up. It's gonna be a lot easier to set up. The third thing is to watch your turns. It's best if you can be in like an open parking lot or somewhere large and spacious where you can start to make some of those turns and see what it's like as you drive. You can make those turns a little bit wider or some would say that you can pull into the intersection a little bit farther before you start making that turn because those, those back wheels are gonna clip in just a little bit or your back end is gonna swing out a little bit more. So just give a little bit more space when you're making those turns. It's a good idea to give a quick look in those rear view mirrors to make sure that you're gonna clear uh, whatever you're going to be going around. 
So those are the three things to remember when you're driving the RV, to take it slow, pay attention, and to mind your corners. I'm gonna leave it open to a lot of the veteran RVers that watch this channel to leave some advice down in the comments, but please keep it simple. And I, I think some of those comments and some of those things from uh, veteran RVers could be really helpful for a lot of people out there. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope this little crash course gives you a, a little bit more information so that you can feel confident getting out there and to go RVing and not be intimidated by it. So we have a lot more information about RVing on this channel. So if you'd like to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If it helped you out, give it a thumbs up. And so if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.